Good afternoon. You know, I've seen more enthusiasm at some of the funerals I've been to. <laughs> Let's try that again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I hope that you're glad to be here because we are. How many of our graduates were supposed to graduate a year ago? All right, I know you never thought this day would get here, but it's here. It's time. This is an occasion for us to be uh, grateful and celebrate. I know that you had a, a long wait, uh, but we're here now. I would first ask, uh, how many people brought a cell phone with them, just by any chance? Put your hand on that cell phone and turn it to silent. And if it should go off during the ceremony, don't answer. Now then, we would ask that you stand and join Provost Chance Glenn in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Oh, the land of the free and the home Please be seated. We have a few brief introductions to make. I'd like to start by thanking Dr. Ricardo Teixeira, who was our faculty marshal today. We're also very fortunate to have a dedicated staff that works very hard to help students get what they need for their educational experience. And uh, I have members of the President's Cabinet here on the front podium, and I'd ask them to stand and be recognized. <laughs> the university is also ably assisted by a regional advisory board, and representing the President's Regional Advisory Board is Dr. Tina Harrington. Dr. Harrington is also a graduate of UHV. And if I'm wearing socks that match my pants and my shirt doesn't clash with my tie, it's because of the first lady of the university, my wife, Laurie Glenn. <laughs> and the best for last. Students are our life's blood at a university. And the heart that beats that blood is the faculty. So I'd like now to give the students an opportunity to express their appreciation to our exceptional faculty members seated here on the stage. Go ahead and rise and be recognized. It's the first time I've ever seen him be bashful. All right.
ordinarily, at a commencement ceremony, uh, we pause for a moment of silence. And to help us do that, we're going to ask T uh, Tiara Figueroa to come forward at this point. She is the president of our Student Government Association. My understanding is the purpose of taking a moment to reflect is to help each of us focus on this moment in time, to be appreciative of our past, present, and future. It's essential to be present, and the word present is interesting since it has several meanings, each of which we can apply to today. A present is a gift. To present is to give something. To be present is to be here in this moment in time. And, and to be in the present is to be fully focused on what you are doing. How many times have you used the word present during the last four years to say, here I am when your name was called on roll? This portion of the ceremony is meant to give you the opportunity to be present now, to be here in this moment and to consider the great accomplishments you have achieved, to realize who you are, where you are, and consider all of those who are here with you today who, here, who came here for your name to be called and say, I'm here. All the great philosophers and thinkers teach us that enlightenment begins with understanding the significance of purpose and meaning. Plato, Rousseau, Frankel, and Kant have thought about the importance of being presidents in some shape, way, and form. So the challenge today is to be present, eyes and heart wide open. It is to see the moment for what it is, a goal realized and a gift received. We offer this moment to each of you to reflect on why you are here, how you came here, and where you may go from here. So please join me as we take a few seconds to reflect upon our journey up to this point. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Figueroa. Today is an exceptional day here in the life of the university. We're going to engage in a commencement ceremony. Now, ordinarily, we would have brought someone in to give you a short lecture to prepare you for your life ahead. But after a worldwide pandemic, we thought you'd suffered enough. <laughs> so I'm just going to say a few short words that I think are appropriate at this time. You're going to participate here in a ceremony that stretches back over a thousand years to the Dark Ages, around 1000 BC, uh, uh, 1000 AD, sorry, not BC, uh, when universities were first beginning to form in monasteries around Europe. It was a time when your options as an individual were severely limited. Wherever you were born was where you were going to stay. If you were born a peasant, you were going to be a peasant all your life. If you were born a nobleman, you were going to be a nobleman. There was no crossing back and forth between stations in life. It was a rigid system meant to keep you in your place. And there was really only one way to move up in life, and that was to come into possession of knowledge, which was scarce. There were, in fact, only two places where books could be found, in libraries, which were controlled by private entities, private families, where you had to be noble, uh, noble birth to have access to them, or in the monasteries. But in order to have access to those books in the monastery, to gain a path forward, you had to join the order. You had to make a decision to go in. And when you did that, you put on a robe the mark of the order. And you also assumed responsibilities to those that you encountered. When you became a cleric, things like hearing confession, giving absolution, serving the poor became your responsibilities. So when a person saw you in your robe, they knew who you were, they knew what was expected of you, and they knew that you were a seeker of knowledge. Now over the years, 
the wearing of robes became more symbolic at universities as universities separated from the monasteries and became separate entities. But even so, it was still associated with the seeking of knowledge and choosing a path forward. You wore a robe as a scholar. You wore a robe as a student. And the robe indicated that you were a member of a community of scholars. When we don these robes as members of the faculty and staff at this university, we are still saying that we understand our purpose in society. We understand our obligation to you and our responsibility to you. And we are still saying that we are here to serve you as well as others. A thousand years ago, when a cleric put on a robe, it was a life-changing event, quite literally. It changed their life, gave them direction, put them on a new path. We hope the same will be true for you. I believe if you were to talk to your faculty members, they would tell you their decision to don the academic robes for their career was life-changing for them. We hope this experience for you today of putting on the robe and becoming a member of the community of scholars gives you a path forward, helps you get to the future that you see for yourself. I would remind you also that today is called commencement, not conclusion. You are not through. You are starting. You are leaving here to go out and do more things, more learning, more service. You will have an impact on your families. You will have an impact on your community. You will have an impact on this university because when people look at you and see what you can do, they will be judging us as well. So we expect, while we are proud of you today, we are proud of what you have accomplished, we expect to be prouder yet as you go out and become a fully educated person and a responsible member of society, as you achieve a life of distinction, we expect to be even more proud of what you've done because you will be showing the world what UHV and a dedicated person can do in combination and how a degree from UHV can open the doors that you want to walk through. So the last thing I will tell you when you come up here and get your degree is to now go and do good work. Go and show the world what UHV can do. Go and show your community that you are a member of the Jacks Nation. And when we're talking about community, I would remind you that the greatest things you will accomplish in the life that is ahead of you, you will accomplish with others not in spite of others. You will accomplish it by embracing your people. And I would remind you today that you are surrounded, quite literally, by the people who brought you to this moment in your life. You didn't get here by yourself. These are people who care about you. These are people that you care about. We asked you earlier to be present, to be fully in this moment. I'd ask you to do that again. And be fully cognizant of the fact that you are surrounded today by people who care about you, your people. And I would encourage you not to leave this place until you say thank you to those people. The mark of an educated person is the ability to understand the importance of being grateful of being thankful, and of embracing your people. During this past year or so, we've had experiences together that will remain with us for a lifetime. In many ways, they have shaped us, and they have forced us to make decisions about how we choose to live among each other going forward. Therefore, being thankful, grateful, gracious, compassionate, and understanding are all signs that the knowledge we have obtained is worthy of the responsibility we have to this planet that we share together. So my message to you is short and simple.
today celebrate. Be fully present in this moment and enjoy it. Embrace it. Be proud of what you have accomplished and be hopeful about the path that you have chosen. Let the robe that you're wearing today be your declaration to the world of who you are and where you are going. Embrace and thank your people. Let this commencement exercise be the start of the next stage of your life. Stand proud that you are a part of UHV's Jacks Nation and show the world what you and UHV can accomplish together. Godspeed. Thank you, President Glenn. And now I would like to recognize some special faculty and students at the university. I would first direct your attention to page six in your program to view the list of faculty emeriti and those faculty recognized in spring 2020 and 2021 by their students and peers for excellence in teaching, research, and service. Dr. Daniel White and Dr. Ricardo Teixeira are both here today, and I would ask them to stand. They should be commended, along with the other faculty award winners, for their work and the difference they make at the university in our students' lives. UHV definitely has outstanding students. There they are before you right now. But those graduating with honors have shown special dedication to their studies. These undergraduate candidates are wearing gold braids over their robes, and their names are listed in your program. I'm pleased to recognize them today. Candidates graduating cum laude with honor have a great a grade point average of 3.5 to 3.67 on a four point scale. Would those graduating cum laude please stand and be recognized at this time? Congratulations. Those undergraduates graduating magna cum laude with high honor have GPAs of 3.68 to 3.84. Those of you with that honor, please stand so we may recognize you. You may be seated. Congratulations. And finally, those graduating summa cum laude with highest honor have a 3.85 GPA or higher. Congratulations on this outstanding achievement. Please stand so that we may honor you at this time. Congratulations again on this great honor. Next, I would call your attention to student members of academic honor societies and the UHV honors program. These students are wearing cords or stoles to indicate membership in these societies, which are listed in your program. Graduates of the honors program com completed an extensive curriculum supplementing their normal academic work while maintaining a high GPA. They are wearing gold medallions designating their achievement. Would all of the student members of these honor societies and honors program please stand and be recognized at this time? Don't be shy about it. It's a great, great honor. Congratulations uh, to you all. Please be seated. Uh, you may have noticed graduates wearing red, white, and blue intertwined graduation cords. We call these our patriot cords. These individuals 
are wearing the Patriot Corps because they are veterans or active service members in the United States Armed Forces. At this time, we ask that all graduating veterans or active service members, as well as any other veterans or active service members in the building, please stand and be recognized at this time because UHV thanks and salutes you for your service to our country. Thank you, and please be seated. We also have with us graduating international students who are proudly wearing a sash representing their country of citizenship. International students are those enrolled at UHV on, a, on an F and J student visa status, and we're honored to have uh, them with us as graduates. Please stand and be recognized at this time. Please be seated. In addition, we have some special graduates who are wearing uh, Jaguar Spirit Cords. These generous students are participating in our JAGS Give Back program, and we appreciate their support of UHV. So if you're one of those students, please stand and be recognized. We thank you for your generosity and support of this great institution. Finally, I would like to recognize the outstanding students for spring 2020, fall 2020, and spring 2021, selected by the School of Arts and Sciences. These students were chosen based on their academic records and related achievements. Please hold your applause until all the students are recognized if the following students are here, I would ask you please to stand. For spring 2020, Katie Parker, outstanding graduate student, and Danielle Charles, outstanding undergraduate student. For fall 2020, Kayla Sevilla, outstanding graduate student, and Courtney Lay Solis, outstanding undergraduate student. And for spring 2021, Magno Gillen, outstanding graduate student, and Frija Magnussen, outstanding undergraduate student. If any of those students are here, please stand. And now the candidates for a degree in the School of Arts and Sciences will be presented by Interim Dean Dr. Craig Goodman. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Applied Arts and Sciences, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Science, and Specialist in School Psychology please rise. On behalf of the faculty, I present these candidates as having fulfilled the requirements for, their de for the designated degrees and recommend that the appropriate degrees be conferred. Will the faculty and the platform party please rise? President Glenn. It is my distinct honor to present to you these degree candidates who are students in good standing with the University of Houston, Victoria, and have completed all the requirements for their respective degrees as set forth by the faculty of the university. I recommend that those degrees be conferred.
So this is another time that I want you to be present. I want you to feel this moment and be aware of it. Captured in this moment are the hours, weeks, months, and years of preparation and dedicated work. So take just one more moment to reflect on that time investment and your hard-won accomplishments, because here it comes. By the authority vested in me by the state of Texas on, on, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Arts and Sciences, I confer, I confer upon each of you and upon those graduating in abstentia your respective degrees with all rights, honors, and privileges thereunto appertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduates of the University of Houston, Victoria. Please be seated. In just a few moments, you'll be ushered forward by the undergraduate marshals and the graduate marshals. You'll come forward and pick up a degree and come forward here to have your picture taken with me. When you finish here, you'll step right over here and take some additional pictures. For those of you in the audience, we encourage you, if you would like to take pictures, to do so, but to please do so from where you are. You should remember that after the ceremony is over, if you wish to come up here and take additional photos, you'll have plenty of time to do that. And let me also say this to the family members. I know when you hear your graduate's name called out, you're going to be sorely tempted to do something raucous. You're going to want to shout and holler and call them names and do all kinds of things like that. So go ahead. This is, in fact, a joyous occasion, and we want you to be able to fully express the joy of this moment. Your graduate has worked hard to get here. They deserve this moment to shine on center stage in front of you. So you go ahead and hoop and holler all you want until they walk away, then you hush up. Because <laughs> there's another one coming, and they deserve their turn, too. So... Dr. Mark Ward will announce the degrees for the school. We will now have the presentation of the 2020 and spring and summer 2021 graduating class. It is now my privilege and very high honor to announce the names of those receiving bachelor's degrees from the School of Arts and Sciences. Madison Cara DuPont. Cum laude. Maria Erlinda Carrillo Ortiz, magna cum laude. Bianca Nicole Rios. Christina Kelly Hoke Miller. Ireas Padron. Amber Nicole Brinecki. Crystal Marie Alcorta. Arnold Garza Jr. Andrew Owen Victory. Joshua Torres, 
cum laude. Jonathan James Huey, magna cum laude. Sarah Marie Trevino. Maribel C. Pena, magna cum laude. Brandon Paul Janus. Frank Casillas, magna cum laude. Kimberly Ann Prusky. Stacy Marie Garcia. Kathleen Jimenez. <laughs> Shelley K. Baker, summa cum laude. <laughs> Hayden Ray Janner, magna cum laude. Abigail Elizabeth Alcusser. Darian Lamar Taylor. Hope Linda Figarova. Mohammed Asakali, summa cum laude. <laughs> Angelina Rose Lee Jansen, a UHV employee. <laughs> Stephanie Roth. Elizabeth Vanessa Cavinta. Jitoku Santiago White. Liana Duque. Amanda Nicole Arasola. <laughs> Trish Marie Castro. <laughs> Rachel Nicole Miller, summa cum laude. Jennifer Chambers Wheeland. Yeah. 
Kimberly Danielle Castillo. Gina Garza Velazquez. <laughs> Natalie Tussaud Lasso. Tanya Jean Gonzalez. <laughs> Lady Balin Sheremy. <laughs> Jasmine Alejandria de Cordova. Madeline in right. <laughs> Jonathan Hernandez, cum laude. John A. Mendez the third. Stephen Jonathan Schisler, summa cum laude. <laughs> Shannon Nicole Lewis. <laughs> Molly Wood Michelis. Molly Caitlin Duke. <laughs> Jacqueline in Horabrena. Maga cum laude. <laughs> Emmy Jennifer Ruiz. Summa cum laude. Bethany Danielle Harrison. Marco Alanis. Mariah Quinn. Marie Santos Carasales. <laughs> Angelica de la Garza. Haley Michelle Meeks. <laughs> Talia Lizette Lazada. <laughs> Alexandra Danielle Rodriguez. Jocelyn Nicole Oranales. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Crystal Amber Chan, cum laude. Amelia Martinez, cum laude. Patricia Sanchez, cum laude. <clears throat> Jacqueline Ray Brady, summa cum laude. <clears throat> Nicole Gonzalez. Viviana Raquel Puente. Itzel Denise Juarez Saldivar, magna cum laude. Desiree Danielle Hernandez. Jocelyn Martinez. <laughs> Candace Markel Hayes. <laughs> Bilal Udin Rook. Miguel Angel Gutierrez, magna cum laude. Mackenzie S. McHenry, cum laude. Victoria Alexandria Gabriel Gomez, magna cum laude. Avery Elizabeth Crone, summa cum laude. Sonia Aline Mata, summa cum laude. Celeste Nicole Rodriguez. Romana Medina. Crystal Barrios Salas, cum laude. Kimberly C. Guerrero, magna cum laude. Steele Lee Adcock. Justin Klein. Tammy Gregory. Samantha Perez.
Kimberly Willett. Patricia Villarreal. April Marie Guevara. Samantha M. Garza. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduating class of the University of Houston, Victoria. Now, don't you all feel better? All right, very good. At this point in our ceremony, it's customary and appropriate for bachelor's recipients to move their tassel to the left from the right to signify that they are now recipients of a degree of higher learning. If you are wearing a UHV class ring, you may also turn your ring so that the seal faces away from you. Congratulations again to all of our degree recipients and welcome to the company of educated persons. Let's give our graduates a final round of applause. Graduates, you now join more than 21,000 alumni of the University of Houston, Victoria. We invite you to become active alumni and keep close ties to your alma mater. We want to hear what you are doing as you continue to make your mark on the world. For a closing benediction, I'd like to share with you a Franciscan benediction. Would you join me? May God bless you with discomfort to easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all of our children and the poor. Amen. It takes many people to plan and organize a commencement ceremony, and I'd like to thank the staff who made this ceremony possible. Your hard work is very much appreciated. Let me also say to our graduates how proud we are of your accomplishments, and we salute you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us at the commencement ceremony of the University of Houston Victoria School of Arts and Sciences. We would ask you to remain at your seats as we have the recessional. We would ask the graduates to stand and recess after the uh, platform party has left the auditorium. Please rise.